for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have Jazzy, and Jazzy is a physical therapist that has just finished treating a patient with a form of the rhinovirus using the proper personal protective equipment or PPE. Which of the following should the therapist doff, D-O-F-F, -F, last? All right, so we got our answer choices. A says gloves, B is the gown, C is mask, and D is face shield slash goggles. All right, there we go. Pretty straightforward question. Not a lot in this one. We need to break it down, though. Make sure we know exactly how to do this one, all right? Now, when it comes down to PPE, obviously this question is all about that. I would say if you're studying anything in infection control for the MPTE, you need to look to the CDC, all right? And I always mess up their name. I always say like centers, centers of Dis D disease. I was going to say destruction. No, center, <laughs> center of disease and control or control of disease, whatever it is, CDC, you need to look it up. All right. Definitely. If you're talking about infection control guidelines. Cool. So let's take a look at this one. It says Jazzy is a physical therapist. Pretty straightforward. That has just finished treating a patient with a form of the rhinovirus. All right. So even though that that's not the end of the sentence, I want to stop there for a moment because we need to make sense of what we just read. It says a form of the rhinovirus. The patient has that. What am I thinking of? Well, I know the rhinovirus can be a, a something that causes the common cold, right? Something that we see very often. My question to you is, do you remember how like the infection control guidelines are broken down? Like our isolation precautions. Do you remember that? And how we have just, you know, your normal standard precautions, universal precautions. And then you have contact precautions. How many of y'all know what C. diff is? You, you know how you had a gown up and all that stuff? You got to make sure you got those gloves on, baby, because you got to watch out for C. diff now. Okay, so that's more of the contact precautions. And then you have droplet precautions where the patient, if they cough or sneeze or even talk, sometimes those particles that come out of their mouth um, or even from their nose if they're sneezing or something like that can travel a distance. All right, in a lot of the, the different areas of text, and, and even if you look on the CDC, they say three feet, but up to six feet at times, right? And so that's more of the droplet precautions, all right? And then you have more of the airborne precautions, things like uh, tuberculosis or shingles, right? Those are more airborne-related uh, types of, in, of infection control or, or your isolation precautions that you need to use, right? Airborne precautions. Now, what is rhinovirus, though? Think about that common cold... You know, the virus that, that is creating that. You should be saying, well, this is more of a droplet precaution. We need to use isolation precautions. Yeah, but droplet specific because this is a droplet type of condition. All right. So it says that the patient is presenting now with this form of rhinovirus droplet precautions. And now the therapist has been using the proper personal protective equipment. So thinking in your mind, well, what is required for droplet precautions? That's something I need you thinking about. Now, it says, which of the following should the therapist doff last? All right. And so for those of you on the podcast, let's go back through the answer choice. We got A, which is gloves. B is gown. C is mask. And D is face shield slash goggles. Let's break this down one by one. A is gloves. All right. First of all, do you use gloves with the, the droplet precautions? I would say so for your contact. Like when you're contacting your patients inside a Q-Care, wherever, you definitely want to be wearing the gloves, right? For sure. My question is, do you doff that last? Well, I'm going to go at this question a little bit different. I'm going to ask you, do have you read the CDC guidelines for which thing you should doff last, what you should don first, you know, don and doff? Have you read that? Because there's a certain, I'm not going to call it mnemonic, but a way that you can remember what should be doffed last, what should be doffed first. How do you do it? Well, you always doff in alphabetical order. And if you're not familiar with that term, doffing means to remove. And what I'm saying is that you should always remove these different items in alphabetical order. 
So we, if we look at A, A is gloves, right? We look at B, B is gown. Look at C, it's the mask, all right? And we look at D, it says face shield goggles. Now, what is the first thing I would doff? It's actually going to be the gloves, all right? Um, and so it, it's, the question's not asking me that. The question's saying, which one would I doff last? I know the first one I would do, which is the gloves, because in alphabetical order, that's the one that's going to be first, right? And so I'm going to put an X next to that. All right. B says gown. Well, I know I would definitely doff that one after the gloves, but do I do it last? Mm, I don't know about that one. Because when I look at C, C is mask and it has an M. So I know that M in the alphabet comes after G. And so right now, I know if anything, I would be doffing the mask last right now, okay? For sure. Let's look at the answer D as in dog. It says face shield goggles. Well, I know that goggles comes after gloves, but it definitely should be doffed before the mask. And so I know that D can't be the right answer. D as in dog is not the right answer. So what does that leave me with? C, mask. Mask is the right answer here, all right? And the way that you remember this, again, is when you have somebody with personal protective equipment, and if your MPT question, your practice exam question is saying, hey, which one of these do you doff last? What I need you to remember is that you always doff in alphabetical order. So for the you on the podcast right now, you might have to stop the car, get off the treadmill a bit and write this down for yourself so you can actually visualize what I'm trying to say to you. But for those of you right now, this is what I want you to do. Can we all put this in alphabetical order so it makes more sense? Okay. So we have gloves. Okay. And I'm going to write that down gloves. So that's G L O V E S. Perfect. And then what's going to come next? The goggles and the goggles and the face shield go together. Okay. Okay. Goggles and the face shield go together, all right? And then how about your gown? Well, that's G-O-W, right? So that's going to come after the goggles. And then the last one is M for mask. And we know that that comes last in the alphabet considering what we have here. G-L in gloves, G-O-G in goggles, G-O-W in gown, and then M in mask. We know it comes after everything. All right. And so how if you wanted to say, like, what is the second thing that you would doff? What would be the answer? For those of you on the podcast, too, come on, say it out loud in the car. Say it out loud in the car. Which one would you doff second? If the question was asking for that, you would doff the goggles second. What would you doff third? It would be the gown. What would you doff last? It would be the mask. There you go. That kind of rhymed a little bit. What would you doff last? It would be the mask, baby. All right, but I need to take you a step further here. There's actually something that you would do last truly. It's not an answer choice here, uh, but there is something that you would do even more last than the mask, and that is to wash your hands. So a better answer, again, it's not in this question, but a better answer could have been wash hands. And you see that the W comes after M in alphabetical order, right? So we would do that one last. All right, so what I want you to do is definitely remember this. This is how you doff in order. Again, gloves, goggles, gown, mask, and then wash your hands. For this question, though, it was asking, well, which of the following should the therapist doff last? A was gloves, B was gown, C was mask, D was goggles. The best answer here is C, as in mask. Now, some of y'all may ask the question of, well, wait a minute, do you don it the same way? Do you don it in alphabetical order too? How many of y'all are thinking about that? All right, well, here's the deal. That is not the case. You don't don it in alphabetical order. But what I'm going to do for you is how about I get that all nice into a cheat sheet for you where it's going to tell you what you doff first and last and what you don first and all that. How about I have that all nice to go for you in a nice cheat sheet? Y'all want that? Those of you on the podcast right now, if that's something that you're interested in, go to the show notes and click the link in there. I got that for you. All right. 
But before y'all jump off right now, I have a little extra piece because this week I've been talking to, I'm talking to about 30, 60, 90 students at this point, like really having one-on-one -on -one conversations. And a lot of them have been asking, hey, Coach K, so I'm having trouble getting down to the final two answers and I'm selecting the wrong one, or I'm overthinking the answers and, and I'm spending too long on the questions. And I'm winding up getting it wrong anyway. And it's super frustrating. Coach K, what can you do for me? Can you help me with this? That has been such a common question this week. So here's the thing. I started to talk to everybody about this, right? And try to really figure out like what is causing the problem and all that stuff. And I came to this realization that a lot of you all are having that problem, but you're looking at this thing entirely different, like the wrong way. Because the NPTE, Follow me for a second. The NPTE is like a game. It is a game in my eyes. It's a game. And it's like the game of chess, if you will. All right, for those of you who have never played chess, hopefully you've seen it before. It's intricate, right? There's a lot of little detail to it. You gotta know what you're doing, there's strategy, all that good stuff. And so here's the thing. In chess, you gotta know what you're doing, otherwise you're gonna get end up in this thing called checkmate, right? Where you're you going to lose because they're going to kill your king, knock your king off, and then you're done. All right. Well, on the MPTE, it's the same thing. Your questions are getting you into checkmate. What that means is you're down to the final two answers. You don't know which one to pick and you're in check. And it's if you select the wrong answer, guess what happens, y'all? You get it wrong. Am I right? Well, so many of you have been asking, well, how do I get out of that situation? What tips, tricks do I have for that? Listen, you have to understand this, that you can get little tips, little tricks here and there, and maybe that helps you out with some of those attempts, you know, some of those times where you get down to the final two answers and you don't know which one to pick, right? And it'll help you out with some of the checkmates that you get into, but just remember that the MPT is a game and there's going to be a ton of times, a ton of different types of questions that are going to put you into the quote unquote checkmate. So yeah, your little tips and tricks can't work here and there, but what you need is a full-on strategy to make sure that you know exactly how to answer every single question, exactly how to respond when you get down to this final two. We need to learn how to put the NPTE in checkmate instead of allowing it to play you, put you in checkmate. Does that make sense? So for those of you who want to answer questions just like I do, you're on the podcast, you're live right now, you're taking the July MPT, the October MPTE. If you're looking to answer questions just like I do, that's the reason why I've created this thing called the PASS system. Not, not just to put more stuff out there. No, I created the PASS system so that you can start answering questions just like I do and putting the NPTE in checkmate. And if you need that if you need to stop getting down to this final two check out nptepass.com you got me nptepass.com get in there and start answering these questions on the freaking next level